Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Lester the Unlikely, brought to us by DTMC and Visual Concepts. Lester the Unlikely is an action platformer with a lot of really cool elements and a great concept. Unfortunately though, because of the concept, the game can come off as very finicky and quite poor at times. You play as, well, Lester, a nerd who ends up somehow on a cargo ship and ends up on a tropical island, and you must find your way through the island and get back home. To do this, you'll have to battle pirates, natives, solve some puzzles, and get courage along the way. You start off extremely skittish, but as the game slowly progresses, so does the confidence level of the main character. As he gets more confidence, well, the game actually plays better. However, until that point, the game can be a chore to work through. So here we go with Lester the Unlikely for this Super Nintendo. When you start up the game, you'll get the opening cutscene before we jump into the main game. After the opening cutscene, we get a little bit more dialogue before getting control of Lester himself. In the upper left corner is our weapon slot, the upper right, our current item we have, then our health and lives in the middle. Your health is represented by canteens. You'll have to drink canteens in order to regain health. However, your health, well, there isn't a whole lot of it in the game, and it does not replenish between levels. Lester, being the nerd that he is, well, he prefers to run away from enemies most of the time. He also will take damage after very little falls. The distance he can fall is very, very short, so I wouldn't test it very much. You're supposed to really get to the edge of a lot of platforms and just slowly fall off. After playing the game a ton, I've realized you can skip some of the more annoying animations. Animations of Lester running away from enemies, or just standing there and literally having his legs shake as he is afraid of anything nearby. This can really break up the gameplay and get really annoying. But if you play the game enough, you'll realize when these scenes are going to happen, because they're mostly set at certain spots, and you can usually jump or attack through them to get past. As far as enemies go, in the first level you'll have crabs as well as turtles. You can kick over the crabs and kick the turtles back into their shell, however the turtles will start moving back around in a few seconds. There are some canteens on the ground to bring back some of your health you may lose. I recommend checking out and testing out your jumping abilities early on. When you make it here, you're gonna run. Hold in the run button and get past the seagull. If you just walk that path, the seagull will pick you up and take you back quite a good distance. Push the crate at the end of the level in order to fall through. There are a few different items that we can pick up inside of the cave levels. You'll have gems that we need to pick up in order to get through the exit of the stage, but there's also rocks spread out which you can use to break up piles of bats that are flying around that will become quite a nuisance. Use the rock to get the bats to go away. Now you can run past the bats or try to jump through them and they will chase you. Sometimes if you're lucky and keep on running, you'll be able to avoid any damage from the bats. For example, this pile right here, I'll jump through and run, and because of the way they work, I'm able to get through the exit to the next area without taking damage. At the beginning of the next area, you'll have to do a running jump, and when you make it over to the right, climb up to the next platform. 
Be sure to pick up this rock on the right, and then jump over a couple more platforms. You'll climb up and use the rock to open up this chest so we can grab the red gem that we need to exit this area. Pick up the canteen if you need it, and then make some leaps over to the right. There's a little bit of a maze concept here, but it's not too difficult to navigate. Be careful of dripping things as well as more bats. Drop the gem at the end of the level on the pedestal and go through the door to be, well, back outside. The next level has a lot of totems, most of which won't do much, but a few are quite deadly. There was a shaking animation before the totems, but I was able to jump through that to avoid it. Jump over and be sure to just slightly jump off that edge of the platform to fall down before making another jump over. Of course, if you try to make the big leap, which looks like it'd be possible, you'll end up just taking damage. Don't worry, even though we're sneaking, there's no threat here. When we make it over here, however, these evil-looking totems, you must kick them before running past. If you run past, you will die. The game gives you kind of an animation beforehand to kind of warn you that this doesn't look good. Now drop down here, pick up this crystal formation on the ground, and then climb back up. When we drop off the other side, we're going to drop off the crystal onto this pedestal, and by doing so, it'll allow us to pass the next Tiki Guard that's nearby. If you don't do this and try to go past him, you'll instantly die. The next area is very difficult. The ground will break up beneath you, and you can kind of see where it's going to start breaking by the way it's shaking. If you're standing on this for even a few seconds, you will end up falling through and it's very difficult to jump out of it. I died a ton of times during the course of learning this level, though thankfully the breaking ground is at the same spot each time. At the end, you have to solve a puzzle. This ghost will tell you to drop the skulls of his enemies into the fire. The first skull that we saw is the first one you're going to want to pick up, get to the edge and drop it into the fire pit. Then go back to the second one and drop that one in. Once you've done so, the ghost will let you pass. Dropping them in the wrong order, well, I'm pretty sure you can guess what will happen. Also be careful when doing that though because you can fall off the edge and fall right down to the fire pit there. In the next area, there's a lot of different huts here, some of which contain items, some contain enemies. However, the one we need is the one located here. Jump over this chair and then push it all the way over to the right. Jump on top of it and you'll be able to get out of the window. Run over to the right and we'll meet the love interest, you could say, for the game. After I think the most lengthy cutscene in the game, we'll be at the next area of the village. Now, you can work your way through the rooftops, but I find it much easier just to jump on the roof and fall through the first roof. You end up getting caught, but this ends up being quicker than trying to manipulate over the fire pits as well as try to get through the roofs, and either way, you'll end up in the same area. Lester gets taken away by the muscle villagers, and you'll end up in a cage. Once you're in the cage itself, go over to the left side, make the guy walk over to the edge of the cage, and then run over and pick his pocket for the key. Grab a rock and throw it to the left side to cause him to walk past the cage itself, then open the cage with the key and run through. If you open the cage with the key before the guy walks past, he will end up attacking you and you won't be able to complete the area. The next area is the rafting segment. 
This is one of the most annoying in the game, and there's actually about three really extremely annoying areas all back to back to back during this game. The main enemies during this area are snakes that will appear in the top of the screen as well as piranhas. At the end of each rafting segment, you'll have to make a jump. The first one you can make without grabbing the vine, the other ones you may have to use the vine to help you out. Duck underneath the piranhas when they come out, and as far as the snakes go, you want to face the left direction. You don't want to be facing right. Make sure you're already facing left. Wait for them to just appear above your head, then walk over to the left. The turning animation, being as slow as it is, will not allow you enough time to avoid the snake falling directly on your head. The appearance of the piranha and the snakes is set each time you play the level. Take out a snake on this platform and grab the canteen. There's a snake immediately on the next platform, and I'm able to just barely get the turn in time, but like I said, most of the times here, you're going to want to make sure you're already facing left before you deal with the snake. Health is so precious in the game, you're going to want to make sure that you don't take any unnecessary hits. Wait for the right moment, then swing over to the vine, and then over to the solid platform to complete the area. Grabbing onto ledges and vines in the game, well, you can guess, is very finicky. And I mean extremely finicky for when it actually wants to allow you to grab the vine. You pretty much have to be grabbing it at the bottom of the vine. Going through the middle part a lot of times will not allow you to grab it, and you will end up just falling. Now, another annoying segment, you'll have to swing, well, multiple vines back to back to back. You'll jump to a vine, swing to a tree, and then repeat. On the last tree, however, we have two vines in a row. Swing a little bit on the first vine until you get the right setup, and then jump over to the next. In the next area, you're going to jump over this box on the left side, and then push it over to the right. Once you've done so, what you'll need to do is jump on top of the box, get up here, and grab the candle. Once you have the candle, push the box back over to the right a little bit, and then jump up to this platform. Drop the candle, and it will drop the weight. Once the weight is dropped, you can jump through the door. However, be careful, because there is now a hole in the floor. Duck underneath and avoid the giant swinging ton brick that is going back and forth, as this will be an instant death. Pick up the boomerang at the end, and then use it to open the door. It's now time for the first boss fight of the game. For the gorilla, you're going to use the boomerang in order to hit him. You can time the boomerang hits to hit him twice each time he drops down. He will drop as soon as he's overhead, so after he fades into the trees, wait a second, and then run to the opposite side of the screen in order to do damage to him. Considering how difficult this game can be at times, this boss fight is, well, pretty much a breeze. Once you've done enough damage to the gorilla, he will fall down, and we will save the girl. Oh boy, this segment. You have to run, swing on vines, and jump over to the opposite side of a tar pit, all while being chased by a leopard. The leopard hits you, and it's instant death. You fall into the tar, well, instant death. Keep running and jumping to the vines. Near the end, you'll have to do two vines in a row. Then, once over here, what you'll want to do is stand here, throw the boomerang to hit the rock pile, and then jump on top of here. If you don't jump up there, the rocks will hit you. Guess what they do? Yep, instant death. Inside the next segment, you're going to grab the blue torch, and then carry that with you along. Run all the way over now to the right side, you'll hit a platform on the bottom, causing a door to open up. You have to open up the doors in a specific order in order to be able to advance. Here we run over the next one, drop down this ladder, run to the right, and hit this one. You'll notice a door opens at the very bottom. Climb back up the ladder and now run over to the left. You'll hit another switch along the way. Run into that room, 
be sure to hit the next switch, but don't hit the one that we hit in order to enter that room. Climb down all the way down here, run to the right, and hit another switch. We've hit all the switches now that we need to. Make sure that the door is open at the bottom though before retreating or else you may make it to the end and realize you have to go all the way back. Not too tricky of a puzzle to kind of figure out. It'll take a little bit of trial and error, but once you've done so, you'll want to go all the way down to the right and climb to the very bottom floor, and you should be able to run all the way to the left if you opened up all the correct doors. And even though it was the previous level, that whole Cheetah Leopard running segment is one of the worst in the entire game, and I died very many times trying to get through. Next up, you'll press one of the buttons like we did in the previous level, and it'll cause the ceiling to start falling down. You'll then have to work your way through a pretty big maze here of falling, and falling in the correct spot so that you can make it to the other sides, in order to avoid getting crushed by the spiky wall of death that is now descending upon you. Make sure that you land on that platform and run to the right, all the way over to the right some more, and then wow, all the way back to the left, and finally one more time to the right, and you'll go through the door to the next area. The next segment is the next boss fight. Here, jump on the first platform, and when you do so, you'll see the other two platforms start to rise. Get them to rise up enough so you can make it to the right, and use your boomerang in order to hit the rock at the end. Every time you hit the rock with the boomerang, you'll notice a little piece of the rock does break off. The whole time you want to avoid falling into the water and the monster that's jumping out of the water itself will of course damage you if he makes contact with you. This can be a little bit of finicky of being able to jump back and forth but once you've done enough damage to the rock you'll be able to jump onto that platform and move on to the next segment. Here you'll have spiders. Yep, these red spiders will fall down after a few seconds so wait for them to fall and then run past them. There's a canteen, thankfully, a little bit in. There's also the stalagmites from the ceiling that will consistently drop down on you. They are at set locations, so you don't have to worry too much about where they'll appear. It's then another boss fight, right away. Here, what you'll have to do is try to open up the webbing that's blocking the door on the right side, all while avoiding a giant spider. The spider will ascend into the ceiling, and after about 5 seconds, he will drop down. So you want to make sure that when he's about to fall, you run the opposite direction so he doesn't land directly on top of you. If you stand near the edge, you can time this so that you run over to the right closer to the door before he's about to fall. Once you've opened up the door enough, you'll be able to run through to the next area. I hope you've enjoyed running segments because, well, we have another one. Here, a wall of lava is chasing us, and we have to run and jump over lava pits, all while fireballs are flying out of the pits themselves. Get to the edge of each one of these platforms by consistently running, and wait for the fireball to dissipate before attempting to jump over these pits. As long as you don't take your time too much after each of the pits, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Then when you make it over here, you're just going to want to hold up and jump over and over again. Just hold the button down, and you'll be able to climb your way out. Fire will be rising from the bottom during this segment too, so you have to hurry. Once you've made it to the top though, you'll see a ladder descend, and once it does, you'll grab onto it and climb up, and move on to the next level. Now we're during the final segment of the game. Here is the pirate themed place. There are spinning rotating barrels during the first segment that you have to avoid. 
There's also some death traps throughout here as well, where you stand on the wrong spot and the ground will immediately break. One is right here. Drop down and then you want to do a running jump. Don't run across it because I always seem to end up falling down. Here, avoid one more barrel before making it to another set of boxes and then climb up to the top. Be sure to grab the canteen here if you're low on health at all, and then drop off the edge. Once down here, run a little bit to the right and use your boomerang to take out the first pirate. He'll drop a sword, and you have to have the sword. I find the boomerang a much better weapon, but you need the sword to continue. You'll have to draw the sword in order to actually attack with it. You can't attack directly. Unless you also want to start just slowly walking, you'll also have to re-put the sword away every time you end up attacking one of the pirates. At the end of the segment, you'll climb up the ladder onto the pirate ship. The next area is a giant pirate ship. Well, the last two levels are. Here, you'll battle a lot of pirates and have to work your way through the ship. The combat is quite dull. It takes two stabs in order to defeat one of the pirates as they slowly walk towards you. When they get close to you, they will sometimes attack. Climb up here in order to get a canteen if you're low. I have full health at the moment, but I wanted to show the location of it. Drop back down here, take out another pirate, and then climb up. There's a lot of pirates here, so instead of dealing with each one of them, that's why that extra canteen comes in handy. Grab it and then just jump through the giant horde of them and climb up the other side quickly. Here you'll have a very long segment of them. Introduced also here are dynamite pirates. Just wait for them to throw the dynamite and wait for it to fully explode and then run over to the right and past them. It's a lot of pirates consistently. It's a pretty tedious area. After what feels like about a hundred pirates, you'll finally be at the end of this segment and be able to move on to the next level. And this is it guys, the final stage of the game. Take out the first pirate and then climb up the first net. I forgot that I was supposed to climb up that net right away and ended up going over to the right and taking out the next pirate. Once you've climbed up this net, wait at the top and take out another pirate and head over to the right. When you make it to the top level, if you've taken some damage, go over to the left as there's a canteen located there. Or continue over to the right, battling a pirate, and work your way down the net level by level until you make it to the bottom, taking pirates out the entire time. Thankfully, there's another canteen located in the upper right corner. This would actually allow you to run through a couple of enemies if you would like to during this segment, since you'll have at least two hits left, hopefully, by this point. After dealing with all those, you'll drop down on another one of the nets and you'll be here. A series of doors. Run over to the far right and enter the first door that you can enter. Inside here there's a canteen and a spoon. Pick up the spoon, but don't use it on the barrel to the right. That is explosive, and you're not going to want to use that. Drop the spoon outside of this room for now. Then run over to the far right and start pushing the cannon all the way over to the left. You'll push the cannon to the door we currently can't enter. Grab the torch at the left side and use it in order to use the cannon to blow open the door. Once you've done that, be sure to run back over to the right and pick up the spoon. Run far over to the right and enter this door here. Once inside, use the spoon in order to gather some water. With the water in hand, go back out of here and enter the door that we blasted open using the cannon. 
Once inside this room, use the water on the TNT, and you have to use it on the actual fuse of the TNT or it won't count, and, well, you've completed the game. Sit back and enjoy the ending. So there you have one of the most finicky games I have ever played, Lester the Unlikely. Like I mentioned, it has a cool concept of starting off with a very skittish, very afraid character who doesn't really want to do anything, and as he slowly is forced to progress through the caves and island areas dealing with the very much hostile natives and other animals, you eventually gain the confidence to be able to move through areas a lot quicker, not be so afraid, and all those forced animations are no longer a problem. Some of the cryptic nature of the game and a ton of possible instant deaths can really drive your patience to the boiling point. However, any fan of adventure-style games that have tons and tons of those instant deaths, this will really not be anything different for them. And while it's very hard to actually recommend checking out the game for yourself, I will say though, if you enjoy a good challenge, Lester will provide that. It is interesting to note that the developer of the game, Visual Concepts, well, is still around today. They created a lot of games during the SNES level, including also the not-so-well-received Harley's Humongous Adventure, but also created gems like the Clay Fighter series, and then started on their slow stride to working with Sega, as well as on sports titles in particular, developing a lot of the Major League Baseball 2K series, NHL 2K, and even currently the WWE 2K series. As the credits finish up, you'll see, well, watch for Lester, he will be back. No. At least as of now, no, he hasn't been. But either way, guys, that will wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.